Hi, and welcome to Medicine Past, Present and Future. My name's Dr. Nick, and I'm the past. And my name's Dr. Isabel, and I'm the future. And together, we're, we're the, the present. present. Now, Dr. Isabel, I was thinking of making something nice to take for the staff at work, a cake or something. What, what do you reckon I should make them? Oh, that sounds lovely. I mean, you should probably do something that's maybe nut-free, probably gluten-free, and realistically, probably dairy-free and egg-free as well. Oh, so maybe my speciality, the gluten-free zucchini lemon slice. Actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> but, but quite seriously, Dr. Isabel, what's going on here? Because there was a time when I could take any old food to work, it didn't matter. But these days it seems like everyone seems to have some sort of food allergy or intolerance. Is it a real thing? What's happening? Well, first we need to differentiate between allergies and intolerances, Dr. Nick. So an allergy is a mass reaction in the body to even a tiny bit of a particle. It can range from quite mild, so sneezing, itching, that sort of thing, to really severe and even life-threatening. Intolerances, on the other hand, they can be quite uncomfortable and the symptoms tend to get worse the more of the food that you eat, but they're not dangerous. And we know that allergies have, in fact, become much more common. In, in my day, something like peanut allergy in kids was pretty rare. And celiac disease, which is true gluten allergy, was something we almost never saw. But in the last 30 years in Australia, the rates have rocketed up. So now around about 4% of adults and up to 10% of Australian children have true food allergies. So what's the reason for this huge change? Well, we don't really know, Dr. Nick, but there are lots of different theories. One of them you might have heard of, the hygiene hypothesis. So this is the theory that, for instance, if we look at more developing countries where sanitary conditions are not so great, allergy rates are lower. But somewhere like Australia, which is now one of the allergy capitals of the world, maybe our life has become just a little bit too clean. That's exactly right, Dr. Nick. And when we think about too clean, what we're talking about is less exposure to natural environments. So for instance, we know that children that grow up on a farm with pets or in close contact with parks and gardens tend to have fewer allergies than those who may be brought up in the city. Now, this seems to be about exposure to microorganisms or little bugs that are in the natural world. And if you have more of that exposure, you're less likely to get the allergies. So maybe it's okay to let the kids play in the dirt a little bit more. Just make sure they wash their hands before eating. <laughs> and talking about eating, one of the other hypotheses is that the increase in allergies is about when we introduce foods. So again, when I was a junior doctor, we used to tell parents that they should delay the introduction of things like eggs and peanuts because we thought that would help. Turns out like so much that I was taught, this was wrong. It's actually better for little developing tummies to be exposed to proteins from things like egg and peanut earlier because it helps their system get used to it and means they're less likely to become allergic. And these are just two parts of a very complicated puzzle. So in summary, it's probably okay to let your kids get a little bit dirty, play around in the garden a little bit. And if you don't have a pet of your own, maybe they could pet the neighbor's dog. <laughs> Always a good thing to play with the neighbor's dog. And the other thing is to think about introducing foods earlier in that six to 12 month period. Just a little word of warning, if there's a strong family history of allergies or eczema, that sort of thing, check it out with your health professional first. Now, Dr. Nick, that lemon zucchini slice sounded pretty good. Do you want a hand in the kitchen? Uh, always happy to have a hand in the kitchen, Dr. Isabel. Thank you very much. Let's do it.